right we are slowly making our way through Chromefall and doing the challenges of beating out every single level with all of the mutators that are required for each quest where we can and this time we've managed to do Durst Disdain I'm not even sure if that's how you pronounce it um, but we're going to do the desert map that's what we're going to call it so I, if you just see my recent video I'll link it below uh, I just went through what the best synergy is for this and of course we're going to use that build in today's session so again as mentioned in that video in theory we can't actually do every single quest in one run because it wants us to do the run with and without the spear but essentially you know whether you did it with or without the spear with this build I'm confident that you would do it with any of the other any of the other weapons but it would be a little bit easier with spear so Without further ado, we're just going to whack on all of the four mutators and they are as follows. So we've got the Challenge of the Turtle God, which increases the enemy's health by 75%. We've got the Challenge of the Tiger God, which uh, increases the enemy's damage by 75%. So that's quite a lot there. We've also got enemies drop 50% less gold. So again, we're not going to have as much gold income. And then also we've got enemies are 75% faster and chase you uh, for 60% shorter or less. Uh, when you attack them so you know some pretty pretty meaty perks there to be honest in terms of how much impact they can actually have on the game uh, for you and then in terms of perks what we're going to go for is we're going to do elite warriors so it says all of your units have 80 percent health but their training speed at night is reduced by 60 percent so the whole idea is that because they've got so much health we shouldn't have as much uh you know as much respawning happening but because the map's so big if there is a bit of respawning happening then because of how far your troops actually have to travel and also how far the enemy has to travel, usually they kind of meet each other in the middle. So minus 60% is quite harsh. Um, I did try to offset this um, with the perk uh, Gladiator School. So units are trained 75% faster, but every upgrade for training facilities costs plus one gold. This is obviously only a 15% net positive by the time you take off the um the 60 there and to be honest you barely even notice it so gladiator school although i did test it it was no good um next perk then so this is following the updates so this is a post update video uh, all of your units heal themselves for by four percent each second now this is really really good um and very 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 strong um especially again given how big the map is this allows your units to stay nice and healthy now i did try to pair this with healing spirits um so all healing effects on you and your units are 65 percent more effective and although there is an increase in the actual durability of your units i think because the fact that the enemy has uh, that increased damage um that because your units aren't outputting enough damage eventually especially when they're swarmed the enemy will just output more damage than you and you won't actually out heal it now i did try this and get to the point where i had towers with healing on them and yes it was effective however just purely because of the output it just was not good enough so uh in terms of damage output so that just was not good enough and healing spirits just can't be used for this build so we've got two perks the final perk then is commander mode so all of your units and buildings deal 40 percent more damage to enemies but your own damage is 60 percent less effective so this is really good um just purely because obviously not only are your units doing more damage but your buildings are which is nice yes you do less damage but this build is not centered around your character your the king that you're playing it's more centered around the units and because of how big this map is that just really works in our favor so without further ado let's let's jump right into it and see how we get on <coughs> okie dokie so we're gonna go for the um town hall straight away and we're gonna go for a gold mine because we want to try and get that income as quickly as possible uh, so if you don't know then basically you get a diminishing return um so the quicker that you can get it up the quicker you'll you know you'll get the, the full amount that you can get from the mines in terms of units we're actually going to go with the knights now i did try this with the spearmen um but what i found is that although they are good at horses and some of the faster moving units they are just way too weak and because we've got that negative against us where where 
the units are spawning not as fast the spearmen die too quickly and then the enemy eventually overwhelms you so we need the tankiness from the knights obviously they're good against the archers which is helpful um, so obviously that's that's always always appreciated and as you can see they're just not really taking that much damage um, obviously we might lose one we need to keep them out of there a bit I was say we don't do that much damage but we can kind of you know, cause a bit of distraction give our units enough time to benefit from that 4% healing every second but this one's nice and easy and what will happen later is the faster units we can actually offset those by the hunters so hunters are actually really really good um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go for the gold mines now at this stage we do need to you need to go for uh, another barracks so we're going to go for the, the hunters now i actually really did underestimate these and i thought that fire archers was best and and that definitely was true uh for nordfells so the the first map not so much here uh the units just move too fast too many horses and stuff in in some of the waves later on and so you just don't quite benefit enough from fire archers uh, with hunters they specifically go out of their way to attack anything that is a monster so uh, the rolling cage balls that are trying to blow up stuff um, they also go for any of the units that kind of specifically target you which later on we're going to obviously try and avoid so and then they do a melee attack like quite close they do output some really good damage so yes they are vulnerable against the ranged units but your knights will kind of get in the way of that so Find, it, find these two as a combo for this specifically to be incredible. We're going to go for the Hunters and then what we're going to do is we're just going to pop the Knights here. And we are going to keep that two extra gold if you were wondering what we're going to do with that. And what I usually do is I, I usually just pop them around about here. So they'll do, some, they'll do some damage and then what we do is we just kind of distract. So units are all in place, let's go for it. As you can see there, the, the damage output is extremely good. Obviously, we can take a little bit of damage. And again, I would say that this is probably easier with Spear. Um, I do need to test this with the other characters. But I don't see any reason why it wouldn't still be possible with the others. I do think that Spear, maybe Lightning, is probably going to be easier. Just because, um, you know, you've got a bit of slowdown there. Lightning, the new... The new character that you can pay um, has, you know, the added benefit of being able to um, being able to sort of kind of kite units that aren't stacked on top of each other. So that can be quite useful. Um, in terms of the upgrade, then, so we're not thinking about ourselves. We purely just want to econ boom as much as possible, get as much gold, and then we're obviously using all about units as the primary factor. So I've gone for the the town hall upgrade there and what we're going to do is we're going to get the last mine which is going to leave us with free gold and we just took the upgrade that gives us a upgraded house every night so the goal is every single night we just add one extra house just to benefit from that but that isn't going to be our primary source of econ so because of the way that we've got our setup here being so strong we're going to put our hunters on the horses and then we're going to focus our knights on top. Now, you'll be quite surprised that four knights can actually do quite a lot of work. And they're going to make short work of those units at the top. We can just leave them up there. So the good thing is, because I've done this quite a few times now, uh, I'm confident that will work. We'll just give it two seconds just for them to get up there. Yeah, they're probably there. Right. So the good thing is, is that the hunters are actually really good against the horses. With the fire archers, obviously, the, the horses sort of get in their face. Um, fire archers have got a slow fire rate, so they'll sort of fire once. Units will obviously not sit in the fire for the first shot. And then by the time they do, um, you know, it's just taken ages and they've got to hit a load. So do bring up the units just in case, but as you can see, we haven't even lost their unit. So they're making short work. Now... If you tried this without Commander, um, your knights probably wouldn't die at this stage, uh, but they wouldn't they wouldn't kill them very quickly. So, you know, lot, lots of benefits. And, and what we can even do now is, even though there's been a slight increase here, four knights will still, still take care of this, no problem. Now, I have tried to 
attempt this, this next, the one at the top. So the 25 men and the seven monsters up there. I have tried to do this without any extra units. You could probably do it with just one uh, extra barracks. Um, and we'll, we're going to try that now. It's probably a little bit on the greedy side. If you're not that confident of a player, you could probably just do it with two barracks and be absolutely fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to go full greed here. So four, four knights, four archers. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to have a house. And we're going to go for our first farm. So this is... This is probably a key part. Make sure you get the extra gold upgrade. None of the others really matter. Um, the whole goal here is to just try and get as stacked as possible. So we've got our, got our knights at the top. They're going to deal with them. And then we are going to manage units at the top here. So even though we have got eight, we need to manage it. It's still quite a few units. So we'll see how we get on. Now keep an eye on your health because these monsters do a lot of damage. So they it won't take many minutes before they um, before they kill you. And the reason why I sort of do this with an extra I've tried this with just four hunters. Um it's, it doesn't really work. Um if you, if you really want to fight the life out of it, you probably could. Um, but I find that a lot of the time they just end up making their way to the mine and you lose, you know, extra gold that you need kind of at the start. So, I tend to avoid that. They would say the knights have took, they took care of the top, so that's all good. Alright. So, the next wave then. So, I definitely get the extra barracks and we're going for, um, we're going for hunters again. Again, I have tried this with crossbow men. Not very good. Um, not had much success with it, so feel free to try it at your own risk, but it definitely didn't work out for me. So what we're going to do is we've got 20 gold, right? And we're going to literally, again, we're just going to go for that big Econ boon. Because I can tell you now, I massively underestimate just how good windmills can actually be. Um, but I think it's because I was usually upgrading them way too late. If you get it in nice and early... They're incredible. All right. So with this one, then, um, this can be a little bit tricky because what can happen is your units will... So what happens is, and, and this is a good thing and a bad thing, so the hunters will specifically target these these units here, so the spiky balls that blow up into your, your stuff. Um, but sometimes they can take it out so quickly that it when it detonates, it, it will kill your hunters so it's the only real thing that can proper kill them in one hit the good thing is they'll chase them so as the balls are sort of coming up they will chase them and they will prioritize them over the knights but obviously you just need to make sure that they don't get too close because otherwise they will kill them so basically if you mess this up it's the difference between keeping a mine and not keeping them on but you won't lose so what we'll do is we'll keep it here and then here we go so we've got the, got the ball there and that's it we want it to explode out the way See, there we go. So this is one of those runs where, unfortunately, we're going to lose the. Um, we're definitely going to lose the mine because that self-destruct that it does, it just, it just kills them in one hit. Unfortunately, so we're not going to be able to slow these down enough to be able to stop them from taking out the mine. So they're going to take out the mine and they're going to take out the two power overseers. It is what it is, and because of actually that that destruction there, yeah, it is going to cause us a bit of bother here. So should be fine still. But this is probably one of my worst ones um, at this start stage. So probably just kind of need to put the. If I was going to do it again, I think I'd put the knights in front of the hunters at the bottom, just so that the hunters, although they will target the um, spiky balls, they won't actually. I never said that in sentence. Uh, they will target them, but they won't get destroyed by them. So that was a bit unfortunate. We've obviously lost some points there, if that matters to you. I'm more about just actually completing the challenge rather than being a bit hell-bent on the points. But hey, each to their own. All right, so we've got 10, 10 horses and we've got the got the arch up here. So 
typically what I'll do at this stage is we'll still continue with the econ boom. So we're gonna go for gonna go for the full full mills here. And what we're making sure is that we've got enough for 16, because we're gonna upgrade two lots of of barracks. Which we're gonna do here. And we've got enough for another house. So remember when we said earlier we we'll keep an eye on those houses. Now we we'll just make another one at this point and be fine. Um now what I usually do at this stage is I will put some units here. Um with the hopes that we will be able to block these twelve coming through. Now usually I wouldn't actually care about them, but because they're going to run through the top, they're actually going to run through some of the farms, and they will take some of those out, which is what we'd, we'd. So losing a farm at this stage is quite impactful. Now, one thing to note on this wave as well: for some reason, a lot of these units spawn at exactly the same time. Um, I've tried putting units on top of them. If you do that, they will get destroyed really quickly. I'm not sure what it is. I think it's because the horses do some sort of like area damage and they do a lot they do a hell of a lot so i have to spawn them like this so without further ado let's get going so we'll keep, keep that going and we'll just keep an eye on it i think we're going to be fine though we're not really getting involved to be honest all of the knights are good so you know they're going to get the job done now this is what i was saying so these actually come down what we want to do kind of like Hopefully not die. We might do it here. Careful. We're sort of just trying to keep them away from the farms. But I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that they ran past all of our troops. And you can actually kill them. Yeah, okay, I thought that'd be the case. We we'll just run back up here. Like massive wimps. Let's let the troops finish them off. There we go. That was nice and easy. So next up we've got so as you can see the gold's coming in nicely. But what we'll go for here is we'll go for the town hall. And we'll go for the upgrade cost of walls and towers get reduced by one every day. So what's really important at this stage is just to make sure that we're getting the walls done early. Because by getting the walls done early, we will be able to get the upgrade for them cost down by quite a lot it's gonna be super benefit for this one too we'll be upgrading that and we just need to bring all of our units down here as well now depending on how comfortable you feel you could could upgrade here um you, you could have upgraded earlier if you really want to i'm not go into because I'm fairly confident we should be okay. I was trying to get this last one done. Okay, that leaves us with 10. So I don't see any harm in upgrading probably just one more barracks. What we'll go for is um we'll go for the archery range there. What we do want to do is just get some of the hunters here just to slow down some of the horses as they're coming through. As I say we don't really have any defence here, the town hall kind of pathetic in terms of the damage that it does even though we've got the 40 percent increase from commander now what we want to do here is kind of annoying because we've got more group up we want to probably just get about three of them here live out there to keep an eye on the spiky balls that we've done because they will go straight for the farm we don't want that need to try and get with us that's good right and we we'll wait for him to come down and what we'll do is we'll just kind of slow these down ourselves and just try not to get caught so i said they will prioritize them as they get close run away from it bring these back yeah, so we just got caught on the edge of that which is unfortunate we're going to lose those troops so it is the it is the biggest detriment to the hunters they kind of you get a little bit too keen. They do finish them off. So we're getting on at the top. 
Ja, så er vi også bare her. Bidays. Alright, so we're gonna go for a meal upgrade down the bottom here, because we know there's no attack coming, so which is good. Now, at this stage, you can either start pumping out all of the infantry units, which I would recommend. Kind of want to get these upgraded as soon as possible. Um, and we've got three different areas to defend, so no easy feat. Next one. What we're going to do is we're going to go probably, I'd say, that much here. There. Got some units at the top to worry about, so let's go for a couple of these. And then we've got the top bit. So, with this round, which is round eight, uh, we're getting obviously quite close to the last round now, so. The most important thing about this round is making sure we don't lose those top farms. That's absolute priority. It's going to be the biggest chunk of our investment. So we want to make sure they survive because I think in the next round, my memory says we'll, we'll be looking to upgrade all these and we'll get our maximum profit from them. But really, really important that we don't lose those. So we're just going to start from the top and just see how the fight goes on here. So I think it should be fine. It's mostly just the giants that you need to be careful of. We can kind of get in the way a little bit. They kind of stir it up. There we go. I think they'll be absolutely fine there. What we'll do is we'll come down here. See how the bottom section is getting on. Take a bit of that. That's fine. I think there's only one supposed to spawn. Let's go up to the top. Top's looking good. Back to the bottom. One's looking good. And top's fine. So, yeah. So, you can see... The synergy and the perks all really starting to come together now which is which is obviously really good so what we're going to do is we're going to grab these units and we're just going to keep them here now i actually do think this is probably a little bit overkill so we're just going to nab some of these back because the horses don't actually spawn all at once they build momentum over time so if for whatever reason you do allow them to build up um then they can become a problem but if you kind of have your units there attacking them as soon as they come out and um, it, it makes it a lot easier to deal with alright cool so we've got all the farms here then so we've got some troops at the top need to get some troops but I'm just going to nab some of these in there and what I usually like to do is just get the spike traps at this stage. Um, probably, I'll probably just put one there actually, and then put one at the bottom. Oh, that farms max. So what we want to do now is because we've got the Arch tower upgrade. Let's just make sure we get another town hall there. Uh, sorry, another house. Another town hall, that'd be nice. Um, we're literally just going to go around and just do towers. So we've got tower here, tower there. What it will mean is that by the time we get to the final round, these will actually be quite cheap. But they'll go down to gold each night. We've got three nights left. So... They'll go down a little bit and make it a little bit more competitive. Without further ado, then let's start and we'll just keep an eye on this, see how we're getting on. As you say, as you see, they won't really. By the time the next one spawns, the first one's dying, so. And because of that regen, again, why I just think the synergy of this build is so good. It just makes short work of them. Yeah, we're not going to lose at the top, so. Fairly confident it's just a case of just watching now.
Cool. So I made short work of them. So this is probably the first wave that actually starts to be a little bit more impactful. So what we'll do is we'll get another house. We will we'll get the tower here. And also get the also get these two which will burn down a little bit. And at this stage I usually just like to fill out any barracks I haven't done yet. So the top two are done. Just the bottom two now. Yeah. They cost quite a bit. So all the barracks are done, so we're actually in a really good position. Then we go for the towers. Not gonna get as much like cost back on these, but I'm not I'm not too bothered about those towers. Get one here. We've got a couple of towers that we can make here. Even though we're not, we don't need to attack here. We can just upgrade them. And then we can decide whether we want to fully commit to those towers or not. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> with this one, we probably need, I would say, probably this many. And this is just so... You stop them from coming through. I think that should be enough for those. And then basically everything else is just coming down the bottom with us. So I usually put some there. We've actually got four more. Four more gold. So we'll just get, get a spike trap there. Which will slow them down a little bit. I think in hindsight we probably could have got this one as well. Just to make sure they definitely come through again. The spike cages will come up. They're going to obviously try and go for the town hall, but the other ones that explode, they will take out the farm. And again, we are trying to avoid the farm being damaged, but in this one, this can sometimes be a little bit unpredictable. Depends on really where the um, where the catapults spawn. So if we can stop the catapults, then great. Likelihood that we won't stop them. We'll give it a go. So, I'm fairly confident top will be fine. We can kind of keep an eye on it from the top here. And we'll just focus on the bottom for a second. At least until the catapults. So there's one catapult. There's a little bit of the second catapult there. Oh, he's gone. Really good. Have a little look at the top. No, no, half as well. Big guys. Great. Yeah, so, we can see they're coming through now. They are going to make their way through, I think. Oh no. Today's going to lose some troops in a second. But they actually don't kill the knights in one go, which is appreciated. They won't kill anyone. Done that. Okie dokie. we got juicy, juicy income coming in. Weird. We've done all of our towers. The We don't do walls until the last night. We don't need to. We just want to make sure we get them as cheap as possible. We're saving up really now at this stage all of our gold um, for the towers. But we don't we don't really need to do anything here. We can just hold on to gold. So don't worry about holding on to loads of gold. That's, there is a strategy behind that. And all we really need to do probably on this bit is... Probably, I'd say that the actual um, the actual giants at the top here are stronger than you think. So they're actually a little bit harder to beat than you might think. I have had a couple of moments where I've let them get through a little bit. So we probably can hijack some of these to make sure that we definitely have enough. Take these out. The archers at the back. Let's just double check, see how much we actually have in. Okay, so that's 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 plenty there. They're not gonna they're not gonna get through. They're gonna block. They don't do that much damage anyway. So, but thirty five obviously is quite a lot of them. So, let's go then. Sixty nine. Woohoo! Sixty nine coins. We're just kind of distracting a little bit. And as I say, you will be surprised how quickly you try and get rid of your units. More than you realise. So, again, 
a little bit nervous now, so we're just going to quickly get on the bottom and see how we're getting on. As you can see, literally no issues whatsoever. We're just going to grab a few units, come flying at the top. We actually was alright, we was actually alright, so I was worried about nothing. Okie dokie, so this is where, obviously, we've got tons and tons of money. So we've got 144 to play with. So most important thing straight off the bat is the walls. So we've got two costs on this one. This one is a one cost. So because we just we built them so early, this is where that town hall upgrade just comes in so clutch. We're literally just going to go around just get all the get all the walls upgraded. the top get this wall upgraded okie dokie so all the walls are done and now we need to figure out what is our plan of, of attack so the way that I did this when I played this the first time or the one that I actually completed this on was I actually went for healing towers um, near the top so strategically put a healing tower there a healing tower. Uh, I think actually this turned into be a sniper tower. This was sniper. This one was healing. If you think about the troops are going to be down there at the bottom trying to defend. Uh, this one was a also a healing tower. And then this one, because we know we've got catapults coming this side, this one was actually a um, ballistic tower. And then here we just go for ballistic tower because what this, what these towers do is they actually do fire across, just which, which is quite handy. So they will do damage if we get overrun at the top, and usually we'll have enough damage here to kind of deal with it. So it's not complete end of the world. And then the last fifteen is basically what I usually do is just kind of fill out what we can. So we'll go for. One at the top, so that's free. Obviously, we're not going to get another upgrade on that. And then just kind of go for all of the core, core buildings. So we don't care if we lose all of the top there. It's not the end of the world. Then we've got so we've got two there. We've probably got one here. Fine. And we've got one here. I mean, these are going to get destroyed so quick. That bolts. And now we just need to figure out what the what the troop distribution looks like so if we think about what's spawning at the tops so we've got quite a lot of archers quite a lot of um horses but we don't really have you know not too many giants so so for this one specifically we'll go we'll go here at the actual bottom and the tower will do a pretty good job of keeping their healed i actually tried this last time and they did a really really good job um, I'm, I'm, I don't even know if they broke through. So, then we'll just take these archers. We don't need those. And what we'll do is we're going to need, going to need some, some men here. Not loads. We don't, we don't need loads, but we need a couple. We're going to grab these up here. And remember, we've got to we've got to kind of split this four ways, so quite a lot to do. And we've got four up here. Again, we don't we don't really have healing here. So I think last time I actually put healing on this tower. We may need to pay more attention to the bottom and the top. Left and right should be okay. That healing tower there to the right might slightly be out of range, but we'll see how we get on. Alright, so I think we're in place. We we probably need to focus more on the top and the right. Um there's not many troops there, but the towers are gonna get involved quite a bit with this spot. So let's see how we get on. Let's give it a go. Thanks, last words. And remember we're specifically looking here on the left. They are the... Come on, go. 
up, but it's like they got a fight for the units. Now we're getting on to the right. I've got one shot. There is. Okay there. Alright, let's just set the top for a minute. So they're getting healed. They're actually mauling them as soon as they come out, which is quite funny. It does get harder. Especially once the giants start coming through. slowly and then some of the other areas start spawning quite fast. We have got some units that are dying so we know they're respawning. Not too many though. Not too many. Got a lot of the giants up here. Oh they're actually getting more. Just bring you guys down So we can kind of tell if things are getting a bit Lum, slim, rough. Um, because we'll see that all of the barracks are respawning units. Here we go, so this is where things are going to start to get a little bit spicy. What we need to do is probably need to kill back some of these units. Bring them up here. We haven't got long, so a lot of the units, a lot of the giants are coming through now. What I usually do is I pull the units from the bottom here because the towers will take care of the rest. The most important thing is making sure that we don't get overrun near the town hall. These will hit the town hall quick if we're not careful. The tower doing a good job there. They're probably going to go for the tower through here. You can drag him down, do it, if you upgraded some of the towers. But I think we're going to be fine there. There we go. I actually think I did... I felt like I did better than before, but we definitely took some damage. But we probably didn't need to. We'll see. The high scored speed is 16,755. Oh, we actually blew it out of the park. I actually did think this was quite a strong run. I was going to copy the last run. Um, exactly, but I kind of knew roughly what we did. But I think the extra farms helped out. I definitely had a better defense here than before. So there you have it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this run. This was the all quests run um, for the desert map. Next up, obviously, is to tackle the ice map. So, and if you have managed to do all of the quests in one run, um, what builds did you do and what were you able to find? This one has taken me so long. Like, it's really frustrating me. I've tried so many different variations and this one really did get the better of me at some points. But I, uh, I persevered and found a build that worked. So I've tried to not look online too much at what other people are doing. Um, it kind of kills me because I want to see what the community like and what what people are searching. But at the same time, I obviously don't want to like steal other people's ideas and i've actually quite enjoyed the theory crafting process even if this map was quite frustrating so that is hand on my heart um if you guys have seen other strategies though that, that have been done then do let me know because uh i'll probably am a bit in the dark but yeah that's it for this video thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one